What is harder to solve, vision or language? Visual intelligence or linguistic intelligence? So I'm going to say computer vision is harder. My reason for this is basically that uh, language, of course, has a big structure to it because we developed it. Uh, whereas vision is something that is common in a lot of animals. Everyone is able to get by. A lot of these animals on Earth are actually able to get by without language. Mm -hmm. And we, a lot of these animals we also deem to be intelligent. So clearly intelligence uh, does have like a visual component to it. And yes, of course, in the case of humans, it of course also has a linguistic component. But it means that there is something far more fundamental about vision than there is about language. And I'm sorry to anyone who disagrees, but yes, this is what I feel. So that's being a little bit reflected in uh, the challenges that have to do with the, the progress of self-supervised learning, would you say? Or is that just the peculiar accidents of the progress of the AI community that we focused on language? Or we discovered self-attention and transformers in the context of language first? So like the self-supervised learning success was actually uh, for vision has not much to do with the transformers part. I would say it's actually been independent a little bit. I think it's just that the signal was a little bit different for uh, vision than there was for like NLP and probably NLP yeah, yeah, folks uh, discovered it before. So for vision, the main success has basically been this like crops so far, mm -hmm. like taking different crops of images. Uh, whereas for NLP, it was this masking thing. But also the level of success is still much higher for language. Yes, it has. Uh, so I, that has a lot to do with, I mean, I can get into a lot of details. For this let's particular go. question, let's go for it. Okay. So the first thing is language is very structured. So you are going to produce a distribution over a finite vocabulary. Mm -hmm. English has a finite number of words. It's actually not that large. Uh, and you need to produce basically when you're doing this masking thing, all you need to do is basically tell me which one of these like 50,000 words it is. Yeah. That's it. Now for vision, let's imagine doing the same thing. Okay, we're basically going to blank out a particular part of the image and we ask the network or this neural network to predict what is present in this missing patch. It's combinatorially large, right? You have 256 pixel values. If you're even producing basically a seven cross seven or a 14 cross 14 like window of pixels, at each of these 169 or each of these 49 locations, you have 256 values to predict. Yeah. And so it's really, really large. And very quickly, the kind of like uh, prediction problems that we are setting up are going to be extremely like intractable for us. And so the thing is for NLP, it has been really successful because we are very good at predicting, like doing this like distribution over a finite set. And the problem is when this set becomes really large, we are, we are going to become really, really bad at making these predictions and at solving basically oh, this particular set of problems. Mm -hmm. So if you were to do it exactly in the uh, same way as NLP for vision, there is very limited success. The way stuff is working right now is actually not by predicting these masks. It's basically by saying that you take these two like crops from the image, you get a feature representation from it, and just saying that these two features, so they're like vectors, just saying that the distance between these vectors should be small. And so it's a very different way of learning uh, from the visual signal than there is from NLP. Okay, the other reason is the distributional hypothesis that we talked about for NLP, right? So a word given its context, basically the context actually supplies a lot of meaning to the word. Mm -hmm. Now, because there are just finite number, finite number of words and there is a finite way in like which we compose them, of course, uh, the same thing holds for pixels, but in language, there's a lot of structure, right? So I always say, whatever, the dash jumped over the fence, for example. There are lots of these sentences that you'll get. And from this, you can actually look at this particular sentence might occur in a lot of different contexts as well. This exact same sentence might occur in a different context. So the sheep jumped over the fence, the cat jumped over the fence, the dog jumped over the fence. So you immediately get a lot of these words, which are, because this particular token itself has so much meaning, you get a lot of these tokens or these words, which are actually going to have, a, have sort of this related meaning across, given this context. Whereas for vision, it's much harder. Because just by like pure, like the way we capture images, lighting can be different. Um, there might be like different noise in the sensor. So the thing is you're capturing a physical phenomenon and then you're basically going through a very complicated pipeline mm -hmm. of like image processing and then you're translating that into some kind of like digital signal. Mm -hmm. Whereas with language, you write it down and you transfer it to a digital signal almost like it's a lossless like transfer. Mm -hmm. And each of these tokens are very, very well defined. There could be a little bit of an argument there because language as written down is a projection of thought. This is one of the open questions is if you perfectly can solve language, are you getting close to being able to solve, you know, 
easily with flying colors past the Turing test kind of thing. Right. So that's, it's similar, uh, but different than uh, the computer vision problem is in the 2D plane is a projection of a three dimensional world. So perhaps there are similar uh, uh, similar problems there. Maybe this is I mean, good, yeah. I think what I'm saying is NLP is not easy. Of course, don't get me wrong. Like abstract thought expressed in knowledge uh, or knowledge basically expressed in language is really hard to understand, right? I mean, we've been communicating with language for so long and it's, it is of course a very complicated concept. The thing is, uh, at least getting like some somewhat reasonable, uh, like being able to solve some kind of reasonable tasks with language, I would say slightly easier than it is with computer vision. Yeah, I would say, yeah. So that, that's well put. I would say getting impressive performance on language is uh, easier. There, I feel like for both language and computer vision, there's going to be this wall of like, that you, like uh, this hump you have to overcome to achieve superhuman level performance or human level performance. And I feel like for language, it, that wall is farther away. So you can get pretty nice, you can, you can do a lot of tricks. You can show really impressive performance. You can even fool people that you're uh, tweeting or you're right, blog post writing or your question answering uh, is has intelligence behind it. But to truly demonstrate understanding of dialogue, uh, of continuous long form dialogue that would require perhaps big breakthroughs. In the same way, way in computer vision, I think the big breakthroughs need to happen earlier to, to achieve uh, impressive performance. Right. 